I've been interested in health for over the last 12 years since high school. Now I can confidently say that I'm in the top 1% of health out of all people. I have excellent fitness status with high muscle strength and VO2 max. I have excellent body composition with low body fat and very low visceral fat. I have perfect blood work with everything in the optimal ranges that are associated with the lowest risk of mortality and greatest longevity. I have perfect sleep and abundant energy all day. In this video I'm going to break down the routine that helped me to achieve top 1% of health and the most important lessons I learned during that. Here's a quick overview of my routine that I've established after 12 years of research. I do resistance training 3-4 to four times a week for 45 minutes per workout. I focus on progressive overload and getting stronger over time. Muscle growth is a byproduct of getting stronger. I do cardiovascular exercise 2-3 to three times a week. 60 minutes of zone 2 cardio twice a week. Sometimes 90 minutes in one workout. I also have one high intensity interval training workout per week, which can be repeated sprints or the Norwegian 4x4 workout. I sleep 7-8 to eight hours without an alarm clock, but I go to bed around the same time every night, which is around 10 p.m. I eat predominantly a Mediterranean style diet with seafood, vegetables, fruit, whole grains, meat, dairy, eggs, and berries. I eat about 120 to 130 grams of protein a day, which is 1.6 grams per kilogram for me. I eat about 200 to 300 grams of carbs a day. I eat about 70 to 80 grams of fat per day. I take the sauna four times a week for 20 minutes. I take a few supplements. Collagen, astaxanthin, glycine, TMG, hyaluronic acid, omega-3s and magnesium. This is the routine that has enabled me to achieve optimal blood work and optimal body composition. In the rest of this video, I'll share with you the key lessons I learned along the way. And in the end, you get a routine that you can follow as well. You don't have to strive for perfection. I don't have a perfect routine. There's no such thing. But I am very consistent. I've consistently exercised for over 12 years, never taking more than a week off. My workout routine isn't perfect, and I could probably be even stronger and faster if I had a scientifically most optimized workout plan for athletes. But that's not my goal. The same with diet. I've been eating healthy and mindfully for over 12 years, and my diet isn't perfect. But I'm consistent with my diet with the core fundamentals. Despite me not having the most perfect routine out there, I'm still in the top 1% of health in terms of fitness, body composition and blood markers. So you don't need to have a perfect routine. You just need to stay consistent with a very good and optimized routine already. Start with the routine that you can follow and progressively overload, get better over time. One of the most impactful things on my body composition and blood markers was adding cardiorespiratory fitness to my resistance training protocol. The truth is you should train both, do cardio and strength training, because both have unique benefits and if you're just training one or the other, you're not covering some of the other benefits. Resistance training with weights is superior for increasing bone density, muscle mass and muscle strength, all of which are essential for optimal health. However, cardiovascular training is superior for heart health, lowering visceral fat, increasing heart rate variability or HRV, and brain health. There's research that combining both is better than just doing one or the other, even if you're at an elite level. However, over the last few years, I've seen more and more research indicating that doing too much high intensity and vigorous exercise isn't that healthy and you should incorporate more moderate intensity exercise. Rather than doing weightlifting and sprinting all the time, you should also do moderate exercise, such as hiking, cycling, brisk walking or slow jogging. The truth about food and diet is that there's no single best diet out there. Everyone reacts differently to different foods. Someone allergic to peanuts might die when they eat them, whereas for someone else, they're just a snack. I eat over 300 grams of carbs a day while maintaining very low body fat percentage and optimal blood sugar levels, whereas someone with metabolic disease would get worse health. My HOMA IR, which assesses insulin sensitivity, is 0.69 and my fasting insulin is 2.5, which are extremely low and lower than 99.9% .9 of people in the world. What determines whether something you eat is bad for you depends how it affects your body composition, your blood markers and your well-being. That's why it's important to adjust your diet according to your blood work. Adjust the carbs and fats based on your blood sugar levels and your lipid profile. Generally eat predominantly whole and minimally processed foods, like vegetables, fruit, meat, fish, eggs, dairy, berries and whole grains. However, eating too much healthy foods can still make you gain weight and in so doing harm your health. So the energy balance is the most important thing. Someone eating a 50% healthy diet who's with a lean body composition and not a lot of extra body fat is generally healthier than a person who has a 100% healthy diet but they're 10 kilograms overweight. Extra body fat is just bad for you. It doesn't matter where it came from. Keep your waist circumference below 95 centimeters for men and 80 centimeters for women or less than 15% body fat for men and less than 30% for women for a healthy body composition. 
if you spend a lot of money on blood work and other medical tests, you should also be willing to change your routines and lifestyle based on those results. If your blood work shows you have high blood sugar levels, be willing to lose some weight, exercise and adjust your carbohydrate intake. If your blood work shows you have high lipids, be willing to adjust your diet, specifically reduce saturated fat and increase fiber. If your DEXA scan shows you have high visceral fat, be willing to do cardio and lose weight. You test, you analyze the results, you implement the changes and you retest. I've taken a lot of supplements in the past that probably didn't work. Here's a list of the best supplements that do work. Collagen, skin anti-aging. Astaxanthin, skin anti-aging and eye health. Lutein and zeaxanthin, eye health. Glycine, blood sugar and inflammation. NAC, inflammation and liver health. Magnesium, stress and metabolic health. Melatonin, sleep and inflammation. Ashwagandha, stress, sleep and hormones. Berberine, lipids and blood sugar. Omega-3s, inflammation, heart health and lipids. Taurine, metabolic health and exercise. And creatine, exercise and brain health. There are a few more with proven benefits, but these are the best ones. Sleeping 7-8 to eight hours is the foundation to healthy sleep. However, it looks like the consistency of when you sleep is equally as important. Going to bed around the same time, plus and minus 30 minutes, is going to keep your circadian rhythms aligned, which causes less stress to the body, and you'll sleep better. Irregular sleeping patterns will mess up your body's circadian clocks, and this is associated with worse health outcomes and increased risk of mortality. Mental health and happiness are incredibly underrated when it comes to overall health and longevity. The truth is that if you have poor mental health, you'll never reach optimal physical health because the way your mind affects your body. It's also easier to stay physically healthy and do the things you need to do to stay healthy if you have good mental health and you're motivated and happy. Based on the research, the biggest determinant of life satisfaction and happiness is the quality of your relationships with friends and family. So you should not neglect them. Alright, let me give the core principles for your own health routine. Do both weightlifting and cardiovascular exercise. Three times a week for resistance training is more than enough. Incorporate at least two moderate intensity cardio workouts between 40 to 60% of your maximum heart rate. Eat a predominantly whole foods diet, but pay most attention to energy balance. Gaining weight even on healthy foods is not healthy. Test only if you're willing to modify your diet and lifestyle. If you're eating a healthy diet, you're lean and you exercise, you probably don't need to take blood work very regularly, but it's going to be insightful regardless. Take the supplements that could improve your health markers and goals, and only the ones that actually have been proven to support those goals. Get 7-8 to eight hours of sleep, but also prioritize going to sleep around the same time. If you think all of this is a bit too challenging and confusing, then don't worry. I've also made a realistic longevity routine for normal people that you can start off with. Check out that video next.